Can you believe that? Uh, what, 18 verses and just flew right through it. Um, we're delighted that you're here with us today. Uh, if you're streaming online, we welcome you and glad that you're a part of, uh, been a part of our service. And uh, we, we invite you to, to continue to do so. Let's pray. Lord, in these moments, we thank you again for your grace upon us. I do ask that uh, you will continue to guide us and direct us and that you'll move me to the side so that your truth may be revealed and, and your spirit will guide and your love will, will be embraced and do the embracing. In Christ I ask it. Amen. Hey, I want to take a moment. Uh, I, my sermon's only about 10 minutes, so I want to take a moment. Uh, Y'all believe that, don't you? Uh, <laughs> But I want to take a moment. Uh, Ron and where's Ron at? Where'd Ron go? Is Ron over here? Ron, where are you at? Ron's left the building. All right. Uh, well, for for Ron and Cammy and all the praise folks, uh, they they've done some marvelous work over these last few months. I wanted to say a word of thanks to them and, and appreciate all that they've done. So let's, I wanted to share that. Thank you all so much for all your work. Tell tell Ron we clap for him. Okay. All right. All right. You know, when you think about movies and going to movies, we're ending up our series on movies. Uh, there's, this, there's this idea about a, a, always a cliffhanger. Or there's there's uh, something else to be revealed, something more to happen. The movie is not complete. You have to come back and see another one. There, there's something else. That, uh, I, Star Wars, what, what episode is this now? The Last Jedi is number what? Eight. I knew somebody would know that. There's only about 45 left, okay? Uh, but, there, you know, I saw The Last Jedi, and you're sitting there thinking, okay, that, but no, there's the words at the end that this, there's something more to come. There's still, some, and I think they have one planned out till Jesus comes. Uh, so uh, there'll be one after another after another. And, and that's part of that, what a movie does. It, it, uh, it captures you, and there, there's that sense that it, it goes on and, and on and on. Uh, watched The Last Jedi yesterday, and, or the day before yesterday, and there's still more to come. Something else is going to happen. And you, you look at this passage. You, if you have your scripture or if you have it on your phone, you want to look at it. In Luke 2, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's in the New Testament. I want to take a few moments to look through this passage this morning because the passage itself reveals a lot about what's more to come that you look at this passage and it's interesting shepherds have gone back no more angels are around the 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 holy family has now after eight days circumcised jesus they've done what a good jewish family does there's singing and there's cooing and there's cuddling and there's there's cleaning and there's feeding and there's resting, and there's sleeping, and cooing, and cuddling, and it's it's back into the routine again. They're 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 doing what a, a, a Jewish family would do. Nothing major, nothing is going to happen. It's going to change. And then they decided that on on the about the fortieth day, that's the day of purification. Uh, Mary had had time after her pregnancy and. Uh, to to be purified and and they they go to the temple as, as uh, Caleb read for us in, in chapter in verse uh, 22 they start to the temple that's what a good Jewish family does back to normal back to routine we like our normal we like our routine and uh, so that they're back to normal and then something happens again there's still more to come because here's Simeon I have I, I've preached on this passage before, but I, I've got to tell you, over the last couple of weeks while I've been studying on this, I, I love what it says about Simeon. It says that he was a, a righteous and devout man looking forward to the consolation of Israel. Now, the consolation of Israel, that's just a big word for he's looking for the Messiah to come and change things the way they used to be, to get things back the way they were, get them back to normal. And that's what he was looking for with the consolation of Israel. And it, and it says here, listen, that he was guided by the Holy Spirit. One version says that the Holy Spirit rested upon him. You know, if, if you're looking at New Year's resolutions, that might be a good thing to think about. 
How, how much does the Holy Spirit guide you? Is he over here in a little box and you just use him in case of emergencies? Or, or is the Holy Spirit something that, that you rely on and lean upon? And do we, as leaders of the church, as people of the church, Look for that guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit rested on him. And he was guided that day to the temple. He wasn't a prophet. From my reading, I have heard people call him the prophet Simeon, but he was just a, a devout person and was guided by the Holy Spirit. And there he saw the Holy Family. And, and something, it's like he swallowed sunshine. He, he was giddy all over. He, he, there was something different about him. He, he saw that the Holy Spirit had said to him, you will see the Messiah before you die. And what he does is that he, he becomes so full of joy that he's going to bust out in a song and, and he can't keep from singing. And, and here's this, this older gentleman coming and approaching this holy family and there's something more to come. The story's not over. There's, there's not just the cuddling and the cooing and the singing and the sleeping and, and, and the holding and caressing and, 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 and the changing and the feeding again. Now it's that the work of Christmas is still going on. There's something more to come. And Simeon takes, the, takes Jesus in his arms and, and he says, and I want to read it to you from the, from the message uh, Here's what it says. God can now release your servant. Release me as, as a, uh, in peace as your servant. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation. It is not in the ages uh, open for everyone to see. A God revealing light to the non-Jewish nations as the glory of your people of Israel. There's still more to come. And Simeon doesn't stop there. Then he turns to Mary. Look at your scripture. He turns to Mary and he says, he says, listen. This little child that I'm holding is going to change and cause turmoil and cause problems. It's no silent night. It's no, oh, isn't he so cute? He's so adorable. Now, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. You're maybe, your baby may have been the cutest baby in the world. But most of the time we're lying when we tell you that. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 they, 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 except for Kylie. Kylie's back there. She was adorable. Uh, but, but, you know, here's what Simeon says. He's saying right out loud, your baby, your baby is going to cause change and trouble. He's going to challenge the powerful and they're going to hate him. He's going to be misunderstood by your family and your friends, by everyone around you. Your, your baby is going to challenge the prideful. Your, your baby is going to challenge your priorities. Still does today. What an announcement. To, you know, it, it th things are not the same. This is what your child is going to do. This is how your child is going to bring change to the world. And you think about it. Jesus did cause tumult and turmoil. That's what truth does. We don't like to talk. We have devalued truth, and, de and I know I'm getting myself in trouble here, but we've devalued truth. We've deconstructed truth. We've, we've determined that truth is not relevant. But when Christ comes, then you have to face the, the truth about yourself and about myself, about where we are with God and where we should we be with God, about what our priorities are. We don't like to do that. That's why we push Christ away. We keep him at a safe distance. That's why we're not guided by the Holy Spirit because we really don't like where the Holy Spirit is often guiding us. It's easier to say that there's a new beginning, but that new beginning is often determined by us. We're going to do a new thing, but it is God's thing. Is where God is directing us. And Simeon says there's still more to come. And, and by the way, he's going to pierce your own soul too. It's like a sword that's going to be driven into your soul and thrust into you. That's the Greek word there. It's, it's thrust into you and, and pierce you deeply and hurt you deeply. But there's still more to come. The work of Christmas is not over because Anna shows up. Now, I don't know from my calculations. She was married for seven years, right? 
she was in the temple for 84 years. That's 91. So she had to be married when she was 13, 14 years old. So Anna was pretty old. She was up over 100. And she's puttering around in the temple, praying and fasting day and night. And she comes and says that your child will bring freedom, redemption to Israel. But there's still more. You know, I, I fell in love with this passage because it didn't stop. We, we don't even read verse 40 anymore. You know, the shepherds are gone, right? The shepherds go back to what they're doing. That's, we don't hear any more from the shepherds. The angels that were there with, with, they were there with Mary, and then they were there with Joseph, and they were there with the shepherds again, and up and down and going all around. You don't hear from the angels anymore. But verse 40, it says, in the moment, it says, the child grew and became strong. This is the only pattern where it talks about there's something going forward. It's, it's Jesus that's going forward. He grew and became strong. And you, you hear this. It says that he, he filled with wisdom and the favor of God rested on him. Grace rested on him. He became strong and grace rested on him. There's still more to come in the work of Christmas. I, I thought a lot about this, this work of Christmas. Here's what my mama did at Christmas time. On Thanksgiving afternoon, we, 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 I was the one that was designated to crawl up in the attic. I get all the boxes down. It was creepy up there. Uh, I won't tell you about the mice that we found in one of the Christmas trees and all this stuff. Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you that. But, but there were, there, we, we went through, you know, you bring the boxes down, and, and you, you put the tree up, and the tree had to be right in the center of the living room window, and it, it had to, you had to move the round table out of the way, and you had to get all the ornaments out, and, and then you had to get the manger scene out, and you had to prepare for Christmas. And, and that afternoon, we had the tree up, and we had the, everything out, decorations up, and the next morning there were, there were presents. Some years there were more presents than others, but there was always presents by Friday or Saturday after Thanksgiving. Stayed up the whole time. Music played from, from, from Thanksgiving evening. We, I got so sick of hearing, uh, I'll be home for Christmas, and I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. My mother lived, uh, loved Ben Crosby, and, and, and we, we, she didn't play anything else. But that's all we heard the whole time till Christmas morning. Christmas morning, we weren't able to get up till 7 o'clock in the morning. But at 7 o'clock, it's like the, you know, you, you, it's a horse race. We'd start down the, down the hallway, just see who's the first one there. And we would unwrap all our presents by 7.15. Now, y'all have been there. You've done that, right? You try to slow it down, and everybody's just running through and tearing things up and throwing things around. It's just chaos. And you think, wow, it, it, it took so long to get here, and it happened so quickly. 7.30, we were in the car. We were on our way to our grandparents or to our neighbors to eat breakfast. At 5 o'clock that evening, it, my mother was like clockwork. At 5 o'clock that evening, it didn't matter what you're doing. You had to be home because we were packing up Christmas. The tree, the ornaments would come down. They'd go in their box. The tree would come down. They'd go in its box. The major seed would come down. They'd go in its box. And, and then we'd take it all to the attic. And then I'd come back in. And there was the round table in front of the window. And when the round table went in front of the window, what did it mean? Christmas was over. It's done. You know, and then you, the lamp would miraculously appear from somewhere and be on the table. And there'd be no more Ben Crosby for the rest of the year. All right? Now, if you like him, that's wonderful, but Christmas was over. And folks, I, I wonder sometimes, we, we say that the work of Christmas is not done, but I wonder sometimes if we really prefer this Christ child that Simeon holding up and saying he's going to change, he came to change you and change me and change the world. I wonder if we really like that, or if we like the one that we can just hold and cut on and go and say, oh, he's so nice. He's so precious. He's not going to bother me. I can lay him down when I don't want to deal with him, and I can pick him up when I want to, but most of the time, he's just Jesus, and we can sing silent night, holy night, and, and go about our life. Simeon's holding him up and saying, he's, he's going to change you, and he's going to change me. He's going to change this world. He came to change the world. He unleashed love on the world. 
Now hear that. A new way of relating to God, a new way of relating to each other, a new way of relating to the world. To see the world filled with love. To live a kingdom life. To awaken life within you and I. As we talked about Christmas Eve, to see the wonder of life. He came to offer grace. Now, here's what we've done with grace. I forgive you, and you can just live how you want to in any way you want to, any time you want to. That's not what Jesus came to do. He didn't come to, didn't come to the woman at the, at the well and say to her, you know, you have five husbands, that's okay. Don't worry about it. He says, what are you going to do with this living water? To the woman that was about to be stoned, he said, you know, where are your accusers? But he didn't say, just go ahead and live like he did. What did he say? Go and sin no more. We've turned grace into what Bonhoeffer would call a cheapened grace. Christ came to change you and change me. He didn't come to leave us as we are. He didn't come to say, hey, that's okay. Just go ahead and, 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 and live in, in, in the way that you're living and in, in, in the way that you're harming yourself or harming others. He came to offer a grace that calls us to himself and not out of ourselves. That, that's the good news. But I, I, I think sometimes we, we prefer comfort in, in our conditions and our conveniences. We, we, we don't like this Christ child being held up and saying he's going to change you and me. We're like, like the rulers that have power. There was a divine reversal. The lowly shall be brought up, right? The high and mighty shall be brought down. If you go one mile, then go two. If you, if you get slapped on one side of your cheek, then turn the other cheek. If you have somebody hurt you, forgive them seven times seventy. It's a divine reversal, a kingdom kind of living that we're called to. But I think sometimes, here's what I wrote down. I, I think sometimes that we prefer enslavement over freedom. That we prefer darkness over light. That we prefer control over obedience. Isolation over acceptance. Exploitation over sharing. Control over transformation, security over salvation, popularity over servanthood, self over others, and the status quo over change. I think about this service especially. In the new year, they're, they're we're going to be trying some new things. And change is, is never easy. But... Folks have gathered and they prayed and they discerned. It's not just, oh, well, let's just change things today. And, and will you be a part of that, that catalyst that's saying, yeah, let's see where God can lead us with this. If you're here this morning, you're part of the 830 service. You know, we'll, we'll keep things together. We'll even give you some chairs to sit in, right? Uh, that, you know, it, it's that... It's that thing that, that you look at. It's going to change in its own right. But if we're not changing, we're not growing. We're not moving. And I think about, I think about this baby that we hold up. What is it in your own life that needs to change? What is it in my life that needs to change? Am I following faithfully and, and like Simeon saying, God, direct and guide my spirit and guide my life? Or am I saying, I'll follow you, but, but here, here's what it's going to cost you. I look at, at this passage and the work of Christmas has just begun. You know, you saw the video at the beginning where will you bring peace to your family and love and joy in, in your church, in your workplace, at your place of leisure? Where will you bring hope to the downtrodden and the discouraged 
Where would you be that person that's the, the hands of Christ in our world today and the feet of Christ? Where is it that God will call you? And will you listen and will you follow? See, one thing I said about my mom, she put Christmas as Christmas is over. But only the decorations. Because she was a living symbol of what it means the work of Christmas still begun. She was out on Tuesday evenings. The day after Christmas, she was out visiting the folks that had come on Christmas morning or Christmas Eve. She was the one at a, at a big church. She and another lady, Audrey Neal, were the ones that went out with Frank Coulter and they visited folks and knocked on doors. She was the one that took me with her. To, with the, the, I can still remember the day after Christmas to the nursing home. Why do I go to the nursing homes today? I'll tell you why I go to the nursing home, because those people are real. And that's what my mama taught me. They taught me that it's important to keep your, your balance and look at your reality of life and see that they, they have value and worth and dignity. See, the work of Christmas, you can decide you can end it now, or you can continue it. But it starts because you and I are willing to be changed. Here I am. I want to be guided. I want to be directed. And I, I ask you as Muncie, do you want to be guided by the Spirit of God or do we want this to continue to do things as they've always been done? God is moving. God is changing. God is always directing. And I pray, my prayer for you today and my prayer for myself is that we'll put a little symbol. And I started to write it out and I forgot to. But we'll put a little a little tag on our, on our mirror or on our rear view mirror or somewhere we can see it. Here I am. I'm willing to do the continued work of Christmas. I believe there's still more to come. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you again for your grace and your mercy upon us. We thank you that you sent Jesus not to make us comfortable, but to bring change. That you brought truth into our lives to reveal when we're close to you and when we're not. When our perspective on people around us is not where it should be. When our attitude is more harmful than hurtful. When our priorities are messed up. When we've spent so much time worried and fussing over finances, we've stopped trusting and looking to you for security. When we've talk so down on ourselves and given up on ourselves that we don't even hear you saying you're my child. Oh God. May we offer ourselves to you afresh and anew this day. May we be guided by your spirit. Here I am. Speak to us now. 
but we know you're in our midst. In Christ I ask it.